sea wolves, and uh, welcome to episode four of Solo. And uh, as you can see, we're on board. We're actually under sail right now, so we're gonna go outside in a little bit. I'm gonna, you know, show you guys a little bit around. So I put my jacket on because it's really, really cold outside. And I'll let's step out of here. Ooh, freezing cold. Here we are. Slowly moving upwind. We've got a second reef in the main to balance it because uh, I only have my jib at the moment. Just walk forward here. As you can see my sails looking perfect. Really tight. Flying beautifully. In the last episode, we uh, it's been a while because my boat was of course out of the water, uh, but we uh, discussed the keels, different keel types really, uh, you know, the function of the mast and the keel together, you know, balancing the boat, different uh, sail types, and so kind of also uh, in in that is the you know the method of reefing and kind of making sure that your boat has the appropriate amount of power for the direction of sail, the point of sail that we also discussed, the point of sail that you're uh, you know sailing uh, to and the amount of wind that you have, which we're kind of, uh, you know, regulating by the different size of sails that we can use uh, on uh, the boat. And so those conclude kind of the intellectual basics, let's say, uh, of sailing. That, that's kind of how I, um, you know, think of uh, that part. And in this episode, I want to talk about uh, kind of the, I guess, uh, six essential systems to kind of keep in your mind, especially when uh, you go uh, solo sailing because uh, we're going sailing but uh, you know maybe you've heard me talk about this in some of the other shows that uh, for me personally I believe that solo sailing is kind of the closest you can be to you know being an astronaut uh, because you're you're very isolated you're very you have to rely on yourself to solve you know most problems that you might possibly uh, encounter and you know you're so far away usually from anybody else to help that you really have to do things yourself and so there are several systems that really don't have much to do with sailing at all that you really need to kind of know at least some basics uh, about so uh, before we get into the actual uh, sailing systems here I want to talk about those a little bit and in separate episodes you know I, I think probably we'll do an episode about like basic motor stuff basic electrical stuff just you know to kind of cover uh, the basics but in this uh, particular uh, episode I want to kind of go through all of them at a little bit of a quick pace so that we've kind of given a broad uh, idea and then in, in subsequent episodes we can kind of go into different uh, subsections and also be easier for you guys to find like I want to know about electrics go to the electric show I want to know about the engine go to the engine show and of course every boat has a different engine so I'll try to stick to the central principles and the things that you know nobody knows everything but there are some things that are kind of good to know in general right and so uh, the first thing that I kind of want to talk about uh, is the engine because uh, you know the engine on the sailboat is far more than just the means to you know get out or uh, get out of the marina or inside of the uh, marina basically if you sail long enough if you make enough miles there is going to arise a situation where through you know maybe mistake or uh, you know oversight or maybe just plain bad luck you're gonna run into a situation where your engine is going to possibly save your life or your boat at some point and what i mean by that is you know uh, uh you're, you're under sail and you're trying to um you know you're expecting to uh kind of cross in front of a big tanker at sea or something and right as you're entering the path of the tanker the wind just completely drops what do you do, right? What are you going to put on your engine and you're going to get out of there? Or, um, you know, I've seen situations before uh, where people got, we had in Sri Lanka especially, we had a certain corner where there was a very strong kind of current and uh, quite often people would really misjudge the strength of the current and they would go much too close to this particular 
like a like kind of like a natural uh, a pier, let's say, and uh, you know they get they get kind of sucked in uh, there, and they'd have to like full engine blast out of there in order not to kind of end up uh, on the rocks. Well, you can, you can come up with a lot of different situations, and uh, you know you can make a case for you know a good sailor can sail himself out of any situation, and that might be true for like. 85% of the situations but again if you sail long enough there will be a situation where your engine will really save either your life or uh, your boat you know or if, if you have a, a man overboard situation in a rough sea for example then the engine generally is a much better way to kind of get to whoever's uh, uh, you know whoever went overboard and control your boat much more precise and if you have to do that with sails etc etc so the engine is super uh, important and especially if you go out sailing on your own you have to really know a little bit uh, some basics about it. So a few things kind of for you guys to kind of dig in yourself and in a separate engine episode I will you know show kind of my engine and go into the different uh, systems but in general I would say I wrote it down here that uh, what you want to know about your engine, so if you're like, getting like a new boat and you're trying to get, you know, into it, uh, you want to know how your engine, uh, wait a minute here, somebody's really trying to get my attention, you want to know how to start and how to stop your engine without... Uh, you know your outside control so usually on any sailboat you have you know like a control board somewhere near the steering uh, uh, you know for controlling uh, your engine where you can just flip the key and the engine will come on uh, and you have like a gas uh, you know throttle and maybe like a, a choke stopper or something like that and that's nice but assuming that all of those break down and don't work and uh, maybe your batteries are dead you want to still be able if the engine is in good shape to start it and so uh, generally most engines have an electric starter assume that that doesn't work usually they have some kind of crank somewhere or you know, I have like I have a crank here on the boat that I can place somewhere on the engine and I can just hand crank it into uh, uh, action if I really need to and so I can start my engine without any electrical help or any assistance I can do it manually uh, same with uh, you know uh, uh, giving it power so even if my throttle in the cockpit doesn't work I know where the actual lever on the engine is so that you know if I start it manually I can also just put it at a a certain amount of throttle so that I have enough power and I don't need the outside controls uh, to do that same with stopping the engine so you know most engines have like a you know a stop cord or something uh, that will basically choke uh, the fuel out of the engine or you know overflowed with fuel and and actually make it uh, stop but uh, of course that line goes to you know a lever somewhere on your actual engine and so you want to actually know where that goes so that if that lever breaks or you know you just for whatever reason can't use that that you can stop your engine uh, uh, somewhere else and so uh, those are kind of the control things that are good to know uh, about your engine the other thing is that's really good to know that uh, you know every engine has a fuel system and a cooling system so you kind of have the engine itself you know produces the power there are some systems inside there that are good to look at but more broadly you have the system that provides the fuel to the engine and usually that means you have a tank somewhere and then you have a you know a line that goes to one sometimes two filters on its way to the engine so you want to know where that runs and where the filters are and preferably how to switch those out so you can replace those you know, because you kind of have to regularly replace those filters to keep your engine running smoothly and uh, and you know where uh, the fuel actually enters uh, uh, your engine so you can also check that system so if anything goes wrong with your fuel maybe you get a leak or whatever you know where that system goes and if any fuel is leaking or whatever you can find that leak and you know avoid the danger of having fuel leaking into your boat uh, the other one is the cooling system so every engine is different uh, all engines have different cooling systems uh, you know most of them are water cooled in some ways most of them get their water from outside but there are also many engines that have kind of an in uh, kind of a closed water loop that you have to refill uh, manually every once in a, a while or they use special cooling water uh, my boat particularly ha just gets its fresh water from outside for the coolant and uh, just like with the fuel it's good to know where your engine gets its coolant so where is the actual intake it's good to know on the outside but also good to know on the inside like how to get to the actual intake that gets the, the water from the outside 
How does that run? Usually it also goes through one or two filters to get any plant life or small kind of crap out of the water before it goes into your engine. Because uh, inside the engine there's usually a path of you know, very fine channels, let's say, that go through the different parts of the engine to kind of uh, grasp the heat from there and then, you know, take that out of your uh, engine. And some of those tubulars, let's say, you know, like the tubular of your of your vascular system are quite uh, narrow. So if you have a lot of like small, you know, plant life uh, and other stuff in the water, that can really clog up uh, your engine. So you really don't want that there. So there are usually several filters. And again, you want to know how to replace those. You want to know how to, uh, you know, exchange those and empty uh, those so that you can keep, uh, you know, the water that flows into your engine nice and clean and clear of any uh, stuff that might clog the system. And again, good to know where the water actually enters your engine so that you know the whole path and you can make sure that it's not leaking anywhere and same you want to know where it exits your engine and how it's kind of you know processed and then finds its way to the outside of the boat so that you know the entire path now i would say that there are many other things that you can you know learn about an engine that are interesting so you can hear if maybe it's developing a problem etc etc but i would say those th if you just know those basics uh that will automatically allow you to assess most of the common problems because usually if there's something with the engine you know you didn't replace the filter uh, your fuel system is clogged somewhere uh, your engine is overheating because it's not getting enough coolant uh, because it's got the clog because you didn't change the filter it usually has something like 85 percent of the problems are either some problem with fuel or some problem with with heat with too much heat developing which is usually a problem uh, with water. So, you know, those are kind of the major uh, things. Then third, there is the, the oil coolant. So usually in order to keep everything lubricated, you have to keep the oil in your engine at a good uh, uh, level, let's say to lubricate uh, everything that's moving inside of there. So usually there's a way to put more oil in your engine and there's a way to extract oil in uh, from your engine with the pump. So you need to know those two places and you need to know how to assess the level of oil. So usually there's a measure stick that you can you know, take out of your engine somewhere and you can see what the level uh, of, the, of the actual oil in your engine is. And it usually has like a little measure there that shows that it's kind of the right uh, amount. Now, most engines, if you put them on, they have like an oil pressure meter somewhere that will show you if it's good, but it's still good to kind of you know, check it at the motor level uh, regularly and if there's something wrong sometimes you know your oil pressure meter can also be broken so it's just good to be able to go in there yourself and check those things about uh, your engine now there are many other things that you can learn about your engine but I would say uh, for a solo sailor really those essentials are really super important and for the most part that will allow you to solve you know 85% of the problems or, or at least assess maybe not solve but assess 85 percent of the problems that you might have and then you can go from there to kind of figure out like if there's a water leak or something you can usually patch it for a little bit to get into the marina and then you know get professional help or figure out how to permanently uh, solve it if there's a fuel problem you can kind of locate it and patch it up get back to the marina you know fix it so that'll allow you to uh, prevent most problems with that so that's the engine then uh, this, the second thing that you kind of want to know about is uh, the sail. So your different sail combinations. Now we'll get to that at a later uh, point, like how to rig all the different sails. But it's such a huge topic that I'll just make kind of separate videos on, you know, rigging this sail or rigging that sail. Uh, but the third thing is the, the rudder. So a rudder, again, is like a super important system on board of your boat. So usually you have your steering wheel or, uh, you know, your tiller to uh, control it. But you also want to know, know how those work. So most tillers are kind of direct onto the uh, steering. So it's just, you know, a stick that's exactly, that's connected right to your rudder bearing and it's just a direct steering. But also many boats, many modern boats especially, have a steering wheel or maybe even two uh, steering wheels. My, my boat is a center cockpit, so I have one steering wheel. And uh, how that connects to the rudder is actually quite uh, complicated. So in my case, you know, I have the rudder. There are like, there's a chain that, says, that runs circular that is kind of going down. That goes to another connection that has like a... a 
a, a metal line, let's say, that goes to my rudder bearing. And so the, the steering wheel steers a quadrant, that steers a different quadrant, that steers the line that actually goes to the steering quadrant. And then if you look at my steering quadrant, you can kind of see it go as you turn uh, the wheel. So there are several steps in there. and. I know how to get to all of the parts of the steering system. Uh, I, I have spare uh, lines in case they would break. And very important, I have an emergency uh, tiller. So uh, if you look at my uh, rudder, um, we call it the roer coning, but like the rudder bearing, I guess, uh, you, you can see my, uh, my linear drive. So that's my autopilot system that actually is directly mounted to my uh, rudder bearing that controls it when I'm running uh, you know, in autopilot mode. Um, but I can also, in case uh, you know, my, my rudder lines break to my steering wheel or whatever, I have an emergency tiller that uh, you know, I can literally grab it in one minute, stick it on there, and then I can actually steer the boat with the emergency tiller. So, you know, basically I know everything there is to know about how my rudder works, and if anything should break on that, I hope that I know enough, and I, you know, I know how to get access to all the parts of it to either, you know, find some kind of temporary fix where I can reconnect the cable with some knots or whatever to make it work to get back to the marina, or worst case scenario, I can put on my uh, emergency tiller and, you know, depower all the different steering lines, put in my new steering line if I was like on a big ocean crossing or whatever and something like that would happen. And I can just install my spare steering line, tighten everything again, take my emergency tiller off and you know go on my merry way with a new uh, steering installation. So that's the rudder and the steering and you kind of want to know everything about that uh, on board. Then number four, uh, the docking behavior of your boat. So uh, you know you think that the sailing behavior is the most important. But before you can sail, you have to know how to get out of the marina and hopefully also back into the marina. And every boat is different, right? Like a small boat is relatively easy to maneuver, but you know, my boat, for example, is, a, is a slightly under 12 meters long and about uh, almost four meters wide. So it's a pretty big, it weighs about nine tons. So it's a pretty big machine to, you know, have to park it in a marina or to be on your own. If you saw my uh, previous episode where I actually put my boat spirit back in the water and delivered it on my own. And, you know, you, you, I kind of, before I do delivery, I kind of show my process of getting it out of a slip on my own in, you know, 25 to 35 knots of wind. It's a previous window, but it's okay. I'll just wait out the next squall before getting out there. But you can see that the boat is now, because I have to start solo, right? So the boat is now a lot closer to the shore. And uh, basically what I can do is I can uh, hopefully get this loose by myself. Yeah, I can do that. So I will pull the boat a little bit towards me. I'll loosen this, but I'll keep it in my hand so that the nose won't you know, fly all the way in the wrong direction. Uh, like that, then I'll hop on board and uh, get out of here. Maybe that's uh, that's the plan anyway. And it's kind of a difficult uh, slip with two poles behind with lots of different options to kind of get stuck and then turn into another boat or whatever. And it's quite tricky to get out of that situation on my own. And so, yeah, every boat is different in the marina. Some of them have, uh, you know, uh, bow thrusters or stern thrusters to help position the boat. My boat has none of that, so I'm just uh, maneuvering it by my engine uh, uh, prop. Every boat's prop is slightly different. Uh, that means that the prop walk, which is also very important. Um, so, you know, depending on which direction your prop turns in, um, when you reverse that prop, it will it will kind of walk. So it will not only just put the boat backwards, but it will also, because it's moving circularly, it will kind of like pull your boat in one or the other direction, depending on which way the prop uh, turns. Now, that's a very good, a very handy property because you can actually use that, you know, when you have a, a, a side, for example, and you come in like this and you put reverse and it will actually straighten the boat towards the side. So that's, for example, something that I use to park my boat very easily because I know exactly how it reacts and how much prop walk I have. And so I can very easily kind of come up to a shore and then ooh, just, you know, very nicely, tightly, backwardly put it against a shore, which makes parking very easy for me. My point is, every boat is different. Uh, when you step on board a new boat, it will take some time and practice maneuvering in tight quarters to get to know the boat at a very slow speed, maneuvering in and out of the marina. 
And uh, yeah, it's just an essential part of solo sailing because if you're solo sailing like me, it means that you're gonna have to get into and out of lots of different marinas, many of the marinas that you don't know, right? So, you know, I often, when I go to a different marina here somewhere in Holland where I haven't been before, now I've been to most of them actually by now, but in the first years when I was sailing, you, you barely know, uh, you know, any of the marinas. They always, usually through the radio, send you to a different dock, so you never really land in the same place. So often, when I go into marina I don't know on which side my line should be so I just put them on both sides I don't know exactly how high my fender should be I don't know how much space there's going to be in the dock I don't know if it's going to be two poles or if there's going to be a deck that I can land against there's all these questions right and so uh, knowing you how your boat maneuvers so that you can make a split-second decision and say oh in this particular situation like once you get to the actual place where you have to dock I better put it in backwards or forwards or to the side or you know depending on where the wind comes from being able to take in all those factors and just be good at maneuvering a bigger boat in a smaller space is just an essential skill as a solo uh, sailor so maybe at some point we'll make a separate episode also on like tight quarters maneuvering with a big boat i think there, there are lots of different people who have different uh, strategies on that i don't think there's like one truth or anything uh, but it's a cool uh, subject and especially if you're sailing solo, you just kind of have to uh, familiarize yourself with it. Now then, of course, there is, you know, everything that has to do with sailing your own boat and how your particular boat works. And it's Jenniker time. Wind is very low now, so it's really not going very fast. About three knots, but still. Going pretty nice. And there is, of course, safety, right? So, um, you know, what are the safety systems on your boat as far as, you know, do you have like a, a small rescue vessel on board, like a life raft, or are you carrying a dinghy? Uh, you know, are, are there any extra things that you might be able to use in an emergency? I have a windsurf board, for example, you know, which, which is also still nice to have because you know uh, on top of my uh, my rescue raft on top of you know having several like rescue slings and f uh, inflatable uh, floaties and vests and different things on board i also have a surfboard you know which which i think that in in a really quick emergency that would actually maybe even be faster uh, for me to kind of get that loose and have something nice that i can you know float on or whatever uh, uh, nearby so it's good to kind of have in your own mind different scenarios for what could go wrong and how you can at least you know get yourself uh, uh, to safety then of course there is the living systems and uh, that's very difficult to uh, to talk about in a video because every boat is different right if you have a very big more luxurious boat you might have lots of electric devices air conditionings all this type of stuff on uh, you know uh, gas heaters stove heaters electrical heater all kind of different systems and um, yeah I would say that uh, all the systems that I have on board I have a busto uh, for heat basically uh, you know I have several different water pumps bilge pumps uh, you know for the shower and different things on board and I have uh, I don't know everything about every system I would say but I have a basic familiarity with all the pumps and know where they were uh, how they work I know where they are wired I know where their stuff comes out on the back of the like, like where the fuses are for the different systems and everything so if something doesn't work I know where to check the right fuses if that's maybe the problem etc um, so I would say any system that you have on, on board if you're a solo sailor you really don't have any excuse to not know at least the basics of, you know, if you have an air conditioning, you should kind of know what the parts, like I don't have an air conditioning, so I have no idea how an air conditioning would work exactly on board. But if you have one, you should know the basics of where it's drawing power, how much power maybe they're drawing, uh, you know, what effect it might have on other systems, if you're running your engine or not, etc. So it's just a responsibility as a solo sailor that all the kind of live on board and you know comfort systems that you have on board even though they're not directly relating to you sailing if you're sailing solo i think you should know at least the basics of how most of these systems uh work and how to you know shut them off and on you know on your on your battery how to detach them all this uh, this different stuff 
And so to kind of show, you know, the simple application of the different things or some of the different things that I talked about uh, today, because I think it's kind of good to actually, you know, see things uh, as they happen. Um, so I thought I'd just put the GoPro behind my boat to just show you a little bit some of the, you know, typical things that you run into on a little solo trip. So here's me backing out of the marina, nothing too complicated there, but I'm using uh, obviously not my steering wheel, but actually that, uh, that wheel uh, walk effect, the prop walk effect to slowly uh, you know turn my boat out of the slip and then engage forwards and uh, get out of the marina now here's something else that's quite typical so we're talking about close maneuvering you know knowing the docking behavior of the boat so uh, i arrive at a, a local lock here that i have to pass through in order to get to the place where i actually want to go sailing and the lock master tells me that uh, you know he wants me to uh, enter one of the smaller uh, locks right after another big cargo ship has moved in there because apparently they're doing some work on the bigger lock where the cargo ships usually go so now all of a sudden i'm on my own and i have to you know uh, uh, enter with my boat in a pretty narrow uh, lock i have about maybe a meter on each uh, side clearance and remember i'm on my own so you know if i make a mistake or whatever there isn't really anybody around to quickly uh, help me so you really have to trust yourself you have to trust your boat and uh, here at the end you see again me using the uh, the prop walk effect to uh, slow down my boat so that I can just uh, talk, uh, you know, dock it nicely against the wall here while uh, waiting for the lock to close and uh, put us through. Then we jump again ahead to a moment a little bit later. So I just raised my head sail and uh, in front of me you can see, uh, well, it's something that's a little bit like an oil drilling station, only this is actually a sand drilling station. So, you know, we Dutch like to build artificial islands in Dubai and of course our country is, is kind of famous for uh, retrieving uh, land from, from sea. And so this particular structure in front of me um, is like an oil rig, but it's gathering sand from the bottom. But around it, there's a giant area, you know, it's marked with buoys where uh, boats can't go. And immediately to the, uh, to the left side, to the port side of me here, uh, are two very busy traffic lanes for a medium-sized container uh, ship. So I literally can't move to the starboard side until I passed this particular uh, sand gathering uh, station and on the left I have this busy uh, lane and uh, obviously I'm motor sailing here and uh, so uh, my what, what I kind of need to do here is raise my head sail while all this traffic is going on to then you know move on to the greater uh, lake so uh, you'll see me kind of maneuvering this is something that I do a lot kind of maneuvering through all these boats uh, to get my uh, while, while getting my sail up and getting myself ready for uh, the journey of the day. So you can see me kind of entering the two busy traffic lanes here, moving through the boats in one direction. But about maybe 500 meter, uh, you know, to the port side of this lane, uh, the area gets too shallow for my boat. So between kind of the sand gathering station, the, the busy two traffic lanes back and forth, and then this kind of sandbar about 500 meters uh, to the port side of that, it's a pretty narrow, extremely busy space to kind of uh, maneuver while raising your sails and doing all the uh, other stuff. So what actually happens here, so usually between the, the different cargo boats, there is, you know, maybe two, sometimes 300, sometimes 400 uh, meters. And so I'm kind of moving uh, between the uh, gaps here. And so as you see me raising my, uh, my head sail, I, and then uh, right away getting ready to make a, a tack, and then as I make the tack, you'll see me move straight back into the traffic lane through the first uh, kind of the oncoming uh, traffic. Um, and then once I've passed that, you'll see me actually uh, turning the boat downwind a little bit as uh, there's another boat coming from the other side, which I won't be you know, fast enough to pass ahead of it. So instead I have to kind of go uh, underneath it, so to downwind and then uh, pass its uh, stern. Now that's all pretty typical stuff, right? So, you know, if you're solo sailing, like I said, sometimes you'll have to rely on your engine for a little bit extra speed, like I'm doing here as I'm maneuvering through this boat, for example. But it's also a pretty typical, you know, raising your sails, putting down your sails, while there's usually, you know, near marinas, a lot of traffic uh, going on, especially if you're also sailing at sea near a big harbor, like the Rotterdam Harbor, for example, like we are kind of forced to do, because those are the sea areas that we have. 
And so, um, yeah, that's kind of why I talked about this particular aspect. Like, these are things that you really have to know before you go out there, uh, really solo sailing, because really every time you go out there, you're going to encounter situations uh, like this. Waves are pretty manageable. Got another cargo vessel there coming. So, thank you all again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this fourth episode of Solo and got some uh, valuable insights uh, for yourself uh, from it. And for now, I will leave you just to enjoy the beautiful sounds that uh, my boat Spirit makes when she's happily under sail.